from the disciplined city of Kalapan, serving you true to life stories. Good day! I am Princess Camille Rampilio, your partner for today's news buzz. As the country commemorates Rizal's Day this December 30, the day which Rizal was executed in Bagumbayan as a Philippine national holiday to celebrate the life and works of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, let's bring into our minds and hearts the memories that our national hero left us including his lessons in life gained in Calamba, Laguna as we showcase his childhood days at his cradle town. Here is Marinel Manin Tim for the story. In order to commemorate the heroism of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, every December 30, the country remembers his sense of nationalism and patriotism for his fatherland, Filipinas, during the Spanish colonization. As we bring back the memories of him, let's dig how he was able to be the result we knew before his heroism. Let's meet Pepe of Calamba Laguna by the set of historians who study Jose Rizal's life and works. So here is... Professor Jim Magindayal to discuss to us how was Rizal in his natal town. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So I just want to ask if how was Rizal in Calamba, which was his natal town. So Rizal's childhood days uh, in Calamba was not like the ordinary. Uh, Pepe, like many Filipino boys, had beautiful memories in his childhood. His was a happy home filled with parental affection, impregnated with family joys and sanctified with prayers. Uh, in the midst of such peaceful, refined, God-loving family, he spent his early years in of his childhood. So, how was Kalamba Hon Pepe? Uh, the beauties of Kalamba impressed him as a growing child and deeply influenced his mind and character. Well, as we can see, the happiest period of his life was truly his childhood days in his natal town. According to random historians, Calamba, his natal town, is known as the cradle of a genius. This town is said to be situated in a verdant plain by the rippling Laguna de Bay. A few kilometers to the south is the legendary Mount Makiling, and beyond this mountain lies the coffee-producing Batangas, while at the north, a lake of poems and song, and beyond the lake, the famous mountain shrine of Miraculous Lady of Peace and Good Voyage is magnificently located. Why is Kalamba called the Cradle of Genius? So, Kalamba was a Shenda town which belonged to the Dominican Order. Actually, it is known for its fertile fields of rice and sugar cane, including its green meadows of innumerable fruit trees and bananas um it's singing birds abounding the lake river and fields including its starry nights that was also filled with poetry and sadness um aside from this the lovely sunrises over the lake and mountains it is charming panoramic views is a fit is a fit place to nurture a growing child. So, this was the reason why Kalamba was a cradle of genius. Rizal loved Kalamba with all his heart and soul. According to his poem entitled Un Recuerdo Mi Pueblo, or In Memory of My Town, written when he was 15 years of age and was a student of Ateneo, he remembered his beloved town. Ah! Tender childhood, lovely town, rich fount of my felicities, O oh, those harmonious melodies, which put to flight all these small hours. Come back to my heart once more, come back, gentle hours. I yearn, come back, as the birds return at the budding of the flowers. When Zarizal was three years old, 
this garden witnessed the childhood of our national hero. His boyhood memories was characterized by playing in the garden while he watched and marveled to birds like Pipit, Maya, Kilyawan, and Maria Capra. And he listens with wonder and joy the melodious song. Jose and other Rizal children gathered together during nightfall and prayed the angels. He also remembered about stories about fairy tales of buried treasures and trees blooming with diamonds. When at ties, when food served during supper did not appeal his taste, the maid would threaten him about the aswang and the tikbalang, and thus Jose spent his nocturnal walk in the town, especially when there is a moon. His ayah would talk him for a walk in the moonlight by the river bank. Recounting this childhood experience, he wrote, Thus my heart fed in sombre and melancholy thoughts, so that even while still a child, I already wandered on wings of fantasy in the high regions of the unknown. Um, this little was an experience to be heartbroken during his childhood. Well, yes, result children were bound together by ties of love and companionship. Their parents taught them to love another, to behave proper, properly in the presence of elders, to be truthful and religious, and to help one another. Pepe was closest to his brother Pasiano and as well as his little sister Concha, who he loved the most. So unfortunately, Concha died of sickness in 1865. Rizal's first sorrow was when little Concha, whom he fondly called, died when she was only three years old. He cried bitterly and for the first time, he wept tears of love and intense grief. I remember Jose said bitterly on one of his accounts. When I was four years old, I lost my little sister Concha. And then for the first time, I wept tears of love and grief. Moreover, according to many historians, Jose was a very fused and devoted son of the Catholic Church. He used to take part in the family prayers. He loved to go to church for spiritual nourishment and join different religious activities. In connection with this, when Jose was born, Doña Chudora bowed to the pilgrimage to Antipolo. Since his mother can't join him, Jose and his father went on pilgrimage instead. On June 6, 1868, they rode in a casco or a barge across Laguna de Bay. Since it was his first experience on a lake voyage, he was thrilled and overwhelmed with joy. He marveled and was awed by the splendor and magnificence of the watery expanse and the steel of the night. Um, so how was Jose Rizal literate or educated? Um, does he have tutors? Uh, well, yes, he had. But before those tutors taught Rizal, his first teacher was his mother, Doña Chodora. She was a woman of good character and fine education. Hence, she was a splendid teacher. Mind you, ha, at the age of three, Jose learned the alphabet and the prayers from her. She taught him how to read and to say haltingly the humble prayers, which he was raised fervently to God. Rizal even described his mother as a patient and loving, but is strict as a tutor. Jose was indeed a kind of a boy. Aside from this, we are all aware with the story of the moth which gained popularity because of its lesson and its connection with our national hero. So what is really the hidden thoughts behind the story of the moth? Well, that story starts with this. Doña Chidora used to tell stories to her children before going to bed. In one occasion, she narrated to Jose the story of the young moth which had made an imprint and profound impression in his mind at an early stage of his life. So, what happened? One evening, all members of Rizal's family went to bed early, except his mother and him. The room was dimly lighted by the flickering light from a coconut oil lamp on the table. For him, the light seemed more beautiful and had grown more dazzling and attractive. So from this story, the story of the moth, um, what did the 
my salary. Well, he knew why the moth circled the flame. The tragic fate of the young moth attracted to the splendor of the light that died a martyr to its illusion left a profound impression on Rizal's mind. For him, such noble death was justified. Upholding that to sacrifice one's life for an ideal is meritorious and exemplary. Well, that is quite impressive. Um, so, is it true that Jose, um, at the very young age, started to expose his artistic talents? Yes, it's true. Since early childhood, Rizal revealed his God-given talent for art. At the age of five, he began to make sketches with his pencil and to mold in clay and wax objects which attracted his fancy. You know, Marinel, it is said that one day, when Jose was a mere boy in Calamba, a religious banner which was always used during the fiesta was spoiled. Upon the, request of the, uh, upon the request of the town mayor, he painted in oil colors a new banner that delighted the town folks because it was better than the original one. Hence, Jose had the soul of genuine artist. And we cannot deny that fact. Um, so last question, Professor, about this controversial poem of Jose Rizal. Well, you know, some people or historians like you believe and don't believe that Rizal wrote that poem sa aking mga kabata. So, what are your say about that? Well, you know, Marinel, at the age of eight, Rizal wrote his first poem in the native language entitled Sa Aking Mga Kabata or To My Fellow Children. He wrote this poem as an appeal to his countrymen to love their national language. The poem reveals Rizal's nationalistic sentiments and ideals even at an early age. In poetic verse, he proclaimed with profound feeling that a people who truly love their native language as a part of their culture will undoubtedly strive for liberty like the bird which soars to freer space above and that Tagalog is equal of English, Latin, Hebrew, French, Spanish, and any other languages. However, as you see, the authorship of Rizal in the poem Sa Aking Mga Kabata is suspicious and questionable. According to some historians, why? Because Rizal wrote many things in his life. Apart from his two famous novels, he constantly wrote letters to friends, and family, personal memoirs, and essay for various magazine. A vast amount of his authentic writing has been preserved, but apparently, he never saved a copy of this now famous poem, or even bothered to mention it in writing in his entire lifetime. So, if Jose was not the writer for some historians, who will be the sole owner of this piece? So, it was suspected to be Hermine Hildo Cruz or Gabriel Beato Francisco is the real writer of the poem because of many claims presented by the historian. But since it was not yet proven, Jose Rizal will be accountable for this poem. So, Marinel, aside from this, after writing the poem to my fellow children, Rizal, who was then Eight years old, wrote his first dramatic work, which was a Tagalog comedy. Is it true that it was staged in a Kalamba festival and was delightfully applauded by the audience? So let us interview some information from the locals if they knew this story about it. Ma'am, good morning. Good morning din po. Uh, Ma'am, do you know the event here in Calamba, Laguna where um, Jose Rizal was said to be the writer of this um, drama stage in Calamba Festival? Ah, opo, sabi nga po ng mga lola ko, kwento rin po ng mga lola at nanay nila na yung 
Kwe, comedy raw po, comedy daw po dito ay ano, pinalabas nung may pyesa dito. Tapos ang sabi pa po ay may nakapanood raw po na Gobernador Silio Parampaete sa Laguna. Yun po, nagandahan daw po kaya ano, binili yung mga manuscript sa halagang dalawang piso at pinalabas daw po doon sa Laguna. Thank you ma'am. Rizal was indeed a prodigy of a pen. But aside from this fact, he in a very young age has felt something for his nation. So when is the time when Rizal think about his nation? Um, about his surroundings um, during the time when the Philippines was in the hands of the colonizers? Well, you see, Rizal have these so-called lakeshore reveries. During the twilight hours of summertime, Rizal accompanied by his pet dog, he used to meditate at the shore of Laguna de Bay on the sad condition of his oppressed people. So, um, how Rizal think like that? It is because during his childhood, he spent many hours on the shore of the Laguna de Bay. I was thinking of what was beyond. I was dreaming of what might be over on the other side of the waves. Because almost every day in his town, he saw some Guardia Civil, Lieutenant, cunning and injuring some unarmed and inoffensive villagers. Mind you ha, huh? the villagers only fault uh, was that while at distance, they had not taken off their hat and made his bow and the alcalde treated uh, the poor villagers in the same way whenever they visited. We saw no restraint put upon brutality. Acts of violence and other excuses were committed daily. I asked myself if, in the lands which lay across the lake, the people live in the same way. I wondered if they tortured any countrymen with hard and cruel whips merely on suspicion. Impressive. At the very young age, he was just able to think what was beyond. It was just so magnificent and at the same time sad for him because as a child, he must not experience or witness such kind of brutality. What I can say is just, it's really hard to be resigned. A child's personal development is affected by certain factors. It can also be divided in two major categories, which is the so-called nurture and nature. But in the case of Jose Rizal, he had all the favorable influences. And these influences are the following. Hereditary influence. According to biological science, there are inherent qualities which a person inherits from ancestor and parents. From his Malayan ancestors, Rizal evidently inherited his love for freedom his innate desire to travel, and his indomitable courage. From his Chinese ancestor, he derived his serious nature and love for children. From his Spanish ancestors, he got his elegance of bearing and gallantry to ladies. From his father, he inherited a profound sense of self-respect. In the love mother, he inherited his religious nature and the spirit of self-sacrifice and the passion for arts and literature. Environmental Influence According to psychology's environment as well as hereditary affects the nature of a person. Environmental influence includes places, associates, and events. The scenic beauty of Kalamba and the beautiful garden of Rizal family simulated the inborn artistic and literacy talents of Jose Rizal. The religious atmosphere of his home fortified of his religious nature. His brother Pashano instilled in his mind the courteousness and kindness to women. The fairy tales told by his ayah during his early childhood awakened his interest in folklore and legends. Above all, aid of divine providence. Greater than hereditary and environment in the rate of man is the aid of divine providence. A person may have everything in life, brains, wealth, and power, 
but without the aid of divine providence, he cannot attain greatness in the annals of the nation. Rizal was providentially destined to be the pride and glory of his nation. God had endowed him with the versatile gifts of a genius, the vibrant spirit of a nationalist, and the valiant heart to sacrifice for a noble cause. Rizal was indeed born and nurtured to be a hero. As we commemorate this day when we witness his heroism, we must not forget that as a part of Filipino nation, we must give and act compassion for our fatherland. We don't need to die just to prove that we are a hero because caring and thinking for our nation's future and acting on it with the heart of being a Filipino with nationalism, patriotism, and love for the country, we could be the hero of our own. This is Marnel Manim Team for the Insider's Documentaries. Back to studio. Thank you, Marnel. Again, from the disciplined city of Calapan, serving you true to life stories, I am Princess Camille Rampilio. Good day.